geekbuying.com charges $12.99 for the awesome gallop. And while that may sound like an awful lot for an electric scooter, this 90 pound, 2400 watt monstrosity absolutely murders the performance of a similarly priced e-bike. Claiming a top speed of over 40 miles an hour, the spec sheet looks mighty impressive. But how does the gallop actually perform? Today we're going to break down everything from range, power, top speed, down to more quality of life aspects such as throttle response and handling. So let's get this monster of a scooter unboxed and find out whether or not the Gallop truly is awesome. I started my morning like any other review morning, with a giant box on my front porch. While I was obviously expecting a large scooter, I was still shook at the size of this box. I'm definitely going to need another coffee before dragging this beast out back. And I'm not exaggerating, this thing is heavy at over 90 pounds. Cutting open the box reveals another box. This double boxing strategy did seem to help prevent some damage from reaching the interior, but the Gallop just does not want a dramatic reveal, with the scooter entombed inside of a fortress of foam blocks. After excavating a mountain of styrofoam, the scooter itself appears to be fully assembled and is truly a sight to behold. This thing looks like a transformer. The awesome Gallop is definitely not a toy, but a finely crafted machine showcasing an attractive blend between a stylistic sci-fi appearance while still retaining a very practical design. I take a quick glance over to the user manual to check what needs to be set up and proceed to unfold the handlebar mechanism. It uses a quick release knob with a larger screw and crossbar as the primary locking lugs. Next up is the only true bit of assembly which is to secure the handlebars to the stem using four bolts. I use the included tool set which was actually shockingly nice, I'll probably keep this. The same can't be said however about the included cheap plastic air pump. It's nice that they included one but I'll opt for my own battery electric pump. Finally, I plug the scooter into charge. The 2 amp charger means I will be waiting a while, but the scooter does feature dual charge plugs, so if you're impatient like me, you can order a second charger to get up and running in half the time. Optionally, the locking deck flips up to reveal the battery compartment, allowing for easy removal of the battery to charge externally. The battery itself uses the same dual plug charging system, and locks securely under the deck using a built-in combination lock when installed in the scooter. Overall, the Gallop was extremely quick and easy to get up and running. The Awesome Gallop is a striking blend of functionally stylistic machinery. The black and yellow trim is complemented by the yellow clearance lights which accentuate the edges of the spacious deck. Dual matching hub motors rated at an impressive 1200 watts are coupled with 140mm hydraulic disc brakes and grippy all-terrain tires which are shrouded underneath oversized plastic fenders. This scooter is big. I own a KQI2 and a Razor Icon and the Gallop weighs more than both of them combined. While this scooter is extraordinarily large, it does still fold up, leading to a scooter that's, well, quite frankly, still large and extremely heavy. I generally think of a scooter as something that I can just fold up and whip into a car trunk, but the Gallop is a bit less cooperative in this regard versus the less performance scooters. On the plus side, I'm a fairly large guy at 6 foot tall and 195 pounds, and this scooter feels downright spacious thanks to the tall handlebar stem and extra large deck. Controlling this beast of a scooter is comfortable thanks to that tall stem and comfortable contoured grips. Electronic controls for the lights, blinkers, a somewhat lame sounding horn, the display, and mode select switches are all laid out in a way that makes controlling all of this intuitive without having to constantly look down at what you're doing. The scooter isn't just tuned well for my size, but my weight as well. The shocks do have adjustable preload, but the stock setting seems very appropriate for my weight, with me only barely able to bottom out the shocks by jumping on it with my full weight. The suspension design on this scooter honestly looks a bit crazy, and the bulky front swing arm had me feeling like I was staring down at Bumblebee's head any time I looked down. So why the crazy swing arm instead of forks? Well, having a bit of experience with front motors, I know that they tend to cause forks to lock up when under power. The swing arm places the force of the motor on the pivot point instead, letting the shock do its job. I was a bit concerned about adding another joint between the bars and the front wheel, but the Gallop utilizes very sturdy oversized bearings and pivot axles which don't contribute to slop or any loss of steering precision. Okay, so let's actually turn this thing on and… hmm, well maybe I'm just dumb, but I had to look at the manual to learn to press and hold the mode switch in addition to the key to start it. This makes sense once you know it, but I felt awfully dumb trying to flip the on and off switch for the headlights thinking it was the ignition. Speaking of the lights, they aren't the brightest I've seen, but the highly focused beam makes them appear brighter than they are. Compared to my typical 250 lumen bike light, they appear about twice as bright. The focused beam and especially low angle means that they excel in highlighting hazards in the road, casting long shadows from even small bumps. The running lights, blinkers, and taillights are also quite bright, but they may be more difficult to notice in bright sunlight. The display does notify you when your lights and blinkers are on, which is helpful. 
I also appreciate that the battery percentage is shown both in bars and in voltage, which is nice to see how much charge you have at a glance, but also gives real-time voltage for the tech nerd like me. As far as the controls themselves go, the thumb throttle is very much more responsive than what I'm used to on cheap e-bikes. With almost instantaneous response and very little dead zone, it feels extraordinarily precise, making it very easy to limit my speed when putting around. Pushing the throttle just a bit more unleashes the real power, and in dual motor mode it's hard not to accidentally spin the front wheel. Likewise, the hydraulic brakes also feel very precise while still providing tons of stopping power when needed. I quickly realized just how powerful this thing really is and decided to suit up with some proper riding gear before doing any more test rides. I highly recommend a full face helmet while riding a scooter like this, and other gear such as a padded jacket and armored gloves aren't a bad idea either. I headed out to a local park to practice on a relatively low traffic loop. Despite my inexperience, this scooter handles great, taking curves and turns effortlessly. At low speeds, it handles far better than any of the scooters I've ever ridden, and the suspension makes casual bumps or seams in the road feel like nothing. After a while, I picked up the confidence to take turns a little bit more aggressively before moving out to the road to try some high speed runs. On my first few passes, I was able to take the scooter between 25 and 30 miles an hour, but I backed down as I felt the scooter would get just a little upset or develop a speed wobble. While the scooter felt nimble and extremely stable under 20 miles an hour, higher speeds felt a little bit twitchy. With how well designed this scooter is, I figured this must be a me problem, and I found that I really need to lean into the scooter and shift my weight low and forward. With this knowledge and a bit more practice, I found the confidence to push the scooter, and yes, it does indeed hit 41 miles an hour. The bulk of the time, however, I rode between 20 to 25 miles an hour, where it really feels comfortable and reasonable to go in traffic. I go this fast all the time on my e-bikes, but knowing that I have the ability to tap into additional power is confidence inspiring. While I'm pretty happy with the current setup, it appears that there is a mount for a steering damper. So subscribe and maybe I'll try to source one in the future to see if it improves high speed stability. Speed on the flats is one thing, but how does it handle hills? I don't really have that many steep hills near me, but I went to one of the biggest ones I could find at around 10 degrees of incline. Unsurprisingly, this scooter lugs me up the hill at over 20 miles an hour, which is more than fast enough compared to the lower wattage e-bikes that I'm used to. Thankfully, throughout all my testing, the only mechanical problem I had with the scooter was a flat tire, which wasn't really a fault of the scooter, but rather some trash in the bike lane. This was a little bit annoying, but it gave me the opportunity to get a closer look at the beefy dropouts and torque washers required to keep this big motor in place. The tire was very easy to change thanks to the quick connector on the motor and the split rim design, meaning I didn't have to wrestle around with tire levers. I know a lot of riders prefer tubeless tires and rims, but I far prefer this setup for ease of maintenance and I was back on the road in less than a half an hour. Finally, the most asked question about any electric vehicle is range, and as always, it depends. The battery in this scooter is huge at 52 volts and 23 amp hours. The spec sheet for the scooter is also one of the more honest ones I've seen, listing actual test conditions that they use to get their 50 mile range estimate. Of course, nobody is actually going to ride this scooter at 9 miles an hour, so what kind of range do I get? I find myself usually keeping the scooter in dual motor, but at level 2, which tops out at a bit over 20 miles an hour. This feels like a very comfortable speed without burning up the battery too quickly, while still having tons of power on hand. Riding like this, I generally use around one third of the pack for every 10 miles, so around 30 miles for an entire pack. On the other hand, if you're the type of thrill seeker who needs to ride wheelies or pull full throttle runs all day, the dual 1200 watt motors are fully capable of dumping the 1200 watt hour pack in half an hour or less. Mind you, a half an hour at full throttle would still get you between 15 and 20 miles of range, which ain't too shabby. So all in all, do I recommend the awesome Gallop? Well, I'm personally more of an e-bike guy, but the Gallop is seriously appealing. If what you're looking for is raw performance, and you see pedals on an e-bike as a legal loophole more than a power source, you will absolutely get more performance per dollar out of the scooter versus a comparably priced e-bike. In fact, you'll probably get more value out of the scooter versus a comparably priced scooter. Looking around, it seems like the Gallop is really trying to break into a level of performance and quality that was previously a bit hard to find at this price point. I had a hard time trying to find any real complaints about this thing either. All the parts are very well constructed and solid, and the joints are oversized precision assemblies, and the performance is just outrageous compared to what I'm used to. The large size means it's not as portable as your typical scooter, but it is certainly more compact than a bike. 
The awesome Gallop presents itself as a wonderful entry to high performance scooters with enough performance to have fun while still being very affordable, comfortable, and practical. I have yet to test extended off-road or snow capabilities, and I'm very curious to see how this thing holds up over time. So if you want to hold off and wait for my follow-up, make sure you subscribe. And if you are just as excited as I am about this and want one for yourself right now, check out the links in the description where you can use offer codes to get exclusive discounts starting this Black Friday. I have personally wanted a performance scooter for a long time, and I know I'm not the only one. So if you're looking for the perfect over-the-top Christmas gift for the weird thrill seeker in your life, this may just be it. Well, if you couldn't tell, I really had a lot of fun trying something different for this review. And if you've got any suggestions to try with it, or really anything else you'd like to see, be sure to leave a comment down below. As always, thanks for watching, and happy riding!